Hi, I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography based here in beautiful, sunny Naples, Florida. Recently, especially given the relentless amount of hype surrounding them, I too finally gave in and picked up on the Sony A7 series of cameras with their amazing image quality, small and compact profile, etc. The temptation to give them a try frankly has become a bit too much to pass up. I mean, photographers the world over seem to be having these uncontrollable conniptions of joy over the A7R Mark II, and frankly, the A7 series in general. So I gave in, and I went out and got a hold of the Sony A7 Mark II, the A7S, and an A6000. And the first lens that I got was the really big and really expensive Sony Zeiss 35mm f1.4. And it's a beauty with amazing build quality and amazing optics. But there are some noticeable shortcomings here that you'll really need to consider before you plunk down the hefty chunk of change needed to get a hold of one of these. So first up is build quality. And I'll say it right now, the build is awesome. It's really awesome. The 35 is a beautifully and meticulously sculpted piece of metal from the lens mount all the way to the filter threads. Even the lens hood is built incredibly well as it's made out of a high grade of plastic with a nice matte and smooth to the touch finish. It's really classy. The focus ring is thick and tactile. It's just velvety smooth with the perfect, and I mean perfect, amount of dampening and resistance. Unlike a lot of lenses today, the 35 also includes an aperture ring that allows you to control the aperture setting manually, or you can also set it to A for auto and control the aperture setting in camera. For you filmmakers out there, there's also an option to de-click the aperture ring for silent aperture ring control. There's also not a ton of breathing when focusing, which is a big plus. The lens is also sealed against the elements. Now, on the inside, speaking of elements, there are 12 elements arranged in eight groups, and there are nine rounded aperture blades for some buttery smooth and just creamy bokeh rendering. It's beautiful. And speaking of the aperture, it ranges from f1.4 to f16. The front filter thread is 72 millimeters. Now, on the downside, the 35 is heavy, coming in at 630 grams or just under 1.4 pounds. It's the kind of lens that sort of flies in the face of the otherwise compact design of the A7 series that has turned on so many photographers. Of course, one of the big critiques of the A7 series and E-mount lenses in general has been the lack of fast glass from Sony. And maybe this is why Sony has been so reluctant to come out with really fast glass for these cameras. But as more professionals have migrated to the A7, a 35mm f1.4 is the kind of lens a lot of professionals are going to demand. So heavyweight aside, the 35mm f1.4 is otherwise a physical specimen and easily earns a 10 out of 10 for build quality. So next up is autofocus speed and accuracy. Outfitted with Sony's direct drive, supersonic wave autofocus system, autofocus speed is brisk, but I find it a bit inconsistent and frankly somewhat slow. One of the downsides of mirrorless autofocus systems is their heavy reliance on contrast detect focus. That said, what's so confounding is the A7 Mark II that I've been using has 117 phase detect points versus only 25 contrast detect points but I'm not really seeing or feeling the benefit of those phase detect autofocus points as the AF in this camera has been on the inconsistent side, especially in any kind of challenging lighting. Even moderately low light situations give me a lot of pause as it will literally fly past the intended target like once or twice before it locks on. Now don't get me wrong, it isn't like this in every situation. In fact, in good light, I'd go, I'd go as far as saying the AF is spot on accurate, lighting quick, lightning quick and just amazing. But in low light, even moderately low light, I find it incredibly frustrating to use. For example, if it's even capable of finding focus, it isn't always accurate. And in my experience, the AF on this thing can literally make the difference between whether you get the shot or not while you're waiting for the AF to find focus. As someone who shoots weddings in crummy lighting on a regular basis, I'm really reluctant to bring along the A7 Mark II and this lens. And that's a shame because I'd love to use this lens in low light now, I blame this issue more on the camera than I do the lens, but unfortunately, I have to score the lens's AF ability based on the bodies that I'm using. And as such, for AF speed and accuracy, the 35 gets a 7.5 out of 10. So next up is where the rubber meets the road, and that is, how are the optics? Well, in a word, 
They're fantastic, with some caveats. Personally, I love to shoot wide open no matter what lens I'm shooting with, as the shallow depth of field that really wide aperture lenses and full frame cameras afford in my images, I think they're just beautiful. And at f1.4, the Sony is a formidable piece of glass. It's tack tack sharp in the center of the frame and where it counts at f1.4. Contrast, color, and just the overall mood of the images are just something special. There's a certain quality to the, to the images that just, I'm not even sure how to describe it, but let's just say that they are rich and timeless. I know it's sort of a cop-out to say something like that, but to me, the 35 from Sony creates beautiful and moving images. So with praise like that, what are the downsides? Well, there are a couple of important ones. Specifically at f1.4, there's a lot of vignetting. There's also a considerable amount of chromatic aberration in the high contrast areas, and it is considerable. I'm getting a lot of purple and green color fringing. Fortunately, both of those issues, the vignetting and the chromatic aberrations, are really easy to fix in Lightroom, and I can live with them. But it's just a few more steps to take your images to the promised land. But really, that's about it. However, as with all of my reviews, rather than me t talking about the image quality, I'd rather just demonstrate the image quality. The next two to three minutes will be a series of stills and video clips showcasing the optics of the Sony Zeiss 35mm f1.4. And if Sony can fix the AF on these bodies, then this lens has the makings of a timeless classic. It's beautiful. So last up is value, and this is where you have to think long and hard if this is a lens that you want to get for your kit. On the upside is the amazing build and stellar, timeless optics. On the downside is the price, the weight, and the quirky autofocus of the A7 bodies. Because at $1598, this is an expensive piece of kit that you're going to want to have for the long haul. If you're a professional who wants to make the move to mirrorless, then the 35 is a bit of a no-brainer as, again, the optics of this beautiful beast are practically impeccable. For the filmmaker, especially those of you who use the A7S, the 35 would be a really nice addition as it has the option of de-clicking the aperture ring and manageable focus breathing. For the casual user or hobbyist, truthfully, your money may be better spent elsewhere as there are other 35mm lenses available for considerably less money. Granted, they don't have an f1.4 aperture, but they're very capable just the same. So overall for value, we give the Sony Zeiss 35mm f1.4 an 8.5 out of 10. So 
So to wrap up this review, we gave the Sony Zeiss 35mm f1.4 lens a 45.5 out of 50 and our highly recommended rating. The final word. If you're a professional photographer or videographer considering making the move to the Sony full frame mirrorless system of cameras, then the Sony Zeiss 35mm f1.4 is a very worthy addition to your kit, as the optical quality is literally on the breathtaking side, but the lens isn't without its downsides. As I've mentioned a couple of times, the autofocus on an A7 body would give me an ulcer if I shot weddings with them all the time, as I'd be petrified that I might miss too many shots, especially in the crummy lighting situations that you'll often find yourself when shooting a wedding. But when the lighting is good, the 35 is capable of delivering world-class images and autofocus performance. Really, they're world-class. But at $1,598, this is on the very high end of prime lenses in the Sony arsenal, something you really need to consider before you plunk down the considerable amount of cash that it takes to get one. This is Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography based here in beautiful, sunny Naples, Florida. If you like these reviews, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and until the next time, happy shooting.